Hey there, welcome back to Brad's Labs. Today we're going to be heading back to medieval Perth, Scotland. What is the medieval, or the Middle Ages as it's often called? For many of us, we tend to think of it as a time of knights, kings, chivalry, you know, maidens in need of rescue. And then there's not to mention the what the Americans seem to think the Renaissance is. But movies, books, TV shows, themed restaurants, they all have depicted it in various forms, but they usually revolve around bloodshed. And all of these things typically actually take and focus on one group of people, the British. When did it start? When did it end? Well, simply enough, it started about the time that the Western Roman Empire collapsed in 476 CE. It goes all the way through to the start of the Renaissance. But the Renaissance didn't start for all of Europe all at once. It was stepped out. So where some places were going through the Renaissance, other places were still in the medieval. But when the Roman Empire collapsed, it left this power void behind in Europe. And this is where we see a lot of depictions of the medieval. It's all of these kings rushing to get power. So why are the depictions of the medieval so bloody? And simply enough, that's what sells. Nobody except for maybe Dwight Schrute would sit down and watch a two hour movie of a peasant trying to take and farm their land, pay the landlord and just survive. It would be really boring to be honest. But unfortunately, that was actually what most of their day to day lives were like. It was just trying to survive and occasionally being called up to go fight in a battle for some king that they probably didn't, you know, care for. With all of this in mind, let's go and talk about what Penelope requested. She has to be 18 years old, sent back to medieval Scotland, and she wanted to be a peasant. So there was quite a bit of room for me to work with here. When we think of medieval Scotland, we tend to think of one thing, and that's William Wallace. Now, I could have sent her back to that time period, but I didn't want to. It's been done. It's been looked at, and I wanted to look at something new. So I sent her back to a time period that I didn't actually know much about, and that was towards the end of medieval Scotland. The year is now 1437, and Penelope arrives in Perth, Scotland. She's a con artist and a pickpocket, but what led her to this point in life? She was born in 1419 to farmers just outside of Perth, and her parents would have had to pay for the privilege to even just farm the land. So they paid a landlord. The landlord was not fair to them. But when Penelope grew up, she knew that she was going to have to take and be a farmer too, because that's just the way things worked. Penelope's early years would have actually been quite rough for her parents. There was a lot of corruption in Scotland at this point in time. They were ruled by a regent instead of a king. The regent's name was Albany. But in 1420, he died. But then his son took over. So where was their actual king at this point? In 1406, Robert III actually sent James I to France. It was done, it's believed, to save his life. <coughs> but unfortunately, he was captured by English sailors on the way to France. And even more unfortunately, Robert III died that same year. In 1424, James I turned 18. He was released from prison and he made his way back to Scotland and he started making up lost ground quick. I'm vengeance. He started to enact new policies and new rules, cracking down on the nobility, even going as far as having some of them arrested and executed. This included the regent at the time, Murdoch Stewart, who took over from his father, Albany, he actually had him arrested on unrecorded charges and he was tried and executed. The new policies and reforms he actually enacted went a long way with the common people. He actually made a lot of adjustments to the way the administration of the justice system worked. Let's head back to Penelope now. She quickly realizes that being a farmer is not the life that she wants. She wants more than that. And she's heard of Perth. She knows that Perth is wealthy. She knows that there's kings that visit Perth. And she decides that's where she's going to go. She's going to make her way to Perth and she's going to get her riches. So when she's 14, she decides she's going to sneak away from home and she heads to Perth. She arrives in Perth and she finds that it's busier and livelier than she could have ever imagined. There's people all over. They're on the streets yelling. They're selling their wares. The streets are actually clean. And all of this excites her. So she sets forth to find work. There's one large problem. She can't read. This actually makes it very difficult for her to find any work other than for backbreaking work. And you know, to be honest, that's kind of what she was already doing back at home. This disappoints her. Disappointed! But she decides she's gonna stick through it and survive. So she lives on the streets, she lives off of scraps. She's found it very difficult to actually make any connections. Most of the families tend to only make connections with other families that can help progress their wealth. So she can't actually get married into a family or anything along those lines. And the year's now 1433, and she's getting very tired of this. She's tired of having to live off of scraps, live on the streets, and she's considering going home. But she decides she's going to make one last go to get her riches, and she starts to pickpocket. She finds she's pretty good at it. She's small, she can get in and out, and as long as she keeps her head down and keeps a low profile, she doesn't have anything to worry about. The year's now 1437, 
and she's become quite adept at what she does. She's able to pickpocket. She started conning people now. And she hears that the king is actually due to come to town. This isn't anything new, but she decides if she can get a little bit from the king, that she's going to be set. But then she hears some talk. There's some people that aren't too happy with the way that James I is actually running things. And she decides, you know, maybe I'm going to keep my head down. It's a good thing she decides to keep her head down. Because either on February 20th or the 21st, she's not really certain of the date, the king is murdered. And it wasn't too long after this that the king's widow actually had all the conspirators rounded up. They were led by Walter, Earl of Tall, and she had them all executed. By the time Penelope's 18, she's already either middle-aged or elderly. If she was born into wealth, then she could have expected to live to be around 50 years old, maybe. The social structure during the medieval was actually pretty much set in stone. If you were a peasant at birth, you probably died a peasant. This isn't to say that there wasn't some social climbing. According to Professor Chris Dyer, there was actually some people that managed to make it from being a peasant up to the nobility. But the problem is that you could tell them from a mile away because their names were pretty common, usually things like Smith. If the medieval is such a terrible time, why do we fantasize about it so much? I honestly don't know. If I had to guess, I would say it's because we look at it as a fantasy. We look at it as adventure. And that's because that's the stories that were told. We're not told the stories of the peasants. We're told the stories of those who are going out and doing noble deeds. And in the end, it was a very hard time. Those at the top didn't have a lot to worry about. Their needs were met, but everybody else had to worry about constant starvation. They had to worry about being sent off to die for a battle that they didn't start. I want to thank you all for watching, and I want to thank my patrons. I do hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I hope that there's plenty of dragons for you to slay.